Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the XD Creative Challenge. I'm your host, Jesse Showalter, and it is recap day, everybody. It's the day where we get to look back over nine challenges, see that all we've accomplished, check on all that we've accomplished together, look at some of your work, some of the different projects, go on Behance, into the Discord. And so if you have not joined the XD Challenge, it's not too late. You can always watch the replays. You can scroll down here on Behance dot net slash challenge slash xd all the way down and you can see all the amazing playlists of xd creative challenges um and we got people jumping in the chat right now like uh kiss my creative wait a cuff is moderating today we got bex in the house and clarissa and christelle and all sorts of people so if you're watching this on youtube or somewhere else come on over to behance that's where the action is at speaking of action you can jump over to the discord server this is the Adobe XD Discord server with over 60,000 creatives inside. It's where you've been posting your work. It's where you've been finding friends. It's where you can get your feedback all right here. And I'm real excited that we've had these last nine challenges. Uh, we have the last few challenges have been a focus on typography since we are right smack dab in the middle of 36 days of typography but it does not mean that we didn't get to spend some really cool times inside of adobe xd hey let's look at some of the projects that we accomplished together our very first project was to create kind of an emoji uh card maker and to do that uh we used some really fun lottie animations and we used components and component states so we could swap these out it was really fun it's great to, it's just so cool to see all of the animated lotties that are playing uh, we could even scroll down and grab more of them but that was just a really really fun one and so we'll take a look back at some of those if you have questions also feel free to share any questions you have in the chat it could be a Q&A time as well I think that's kind of fun too so our second project what was our second project this was our crypto picker that's right kind of the tinder of cryptocurrencies where we could uh like see a like a match for us possibly if we didn't like it we could swipe it out of the way that was kind of a fun interaction i really enjoyed that one and you guys did some really great uh awesome representations of our crypto picker number three was our banking website loading animations where we simply press play kind of let things fly, let things come in using delays and timed animations. And we even figured out how to create kind of a little uh, glitch effect by using a mask. I'll show you where that one came in. We had a lot of animation, the glitch went over, the glitch went back up and we did that just expanding and moving a mask around. It was a happy accident uh, in the words of a famous painter that you know that used to paint uh, on the TV. And uh, it was a happy little accident, but sure was a lot of fun. That was our banking website loading animation. Then next we did uh, some collapsing sidebars, right? Just the idea of collapsing in, collapsing out. And I tell you, you guys did a wonderful job at this. Um, sometimes I just get so in the weeds and excited about the design aspect that I'm like, oh no, at the end I get all rushed, right? So <laughs> um, it's pretty, that was a really, really fun one. And you guys did some beautiful dashboards, beautiful sidebars. That was a really great one. I loved this one. Challenge number five was to build responsive widgets, right? So we went in, we were using a lot of um, the responsive resizing over in the right-hand side of Adobe XD to create assets that could be expandable. So we can use assets for uh, an iPad. We could use them for uh, mobile applications and we could scale them all the way up to desktop. Um, so you could see we had some of these beautiful kind of like little widgets inside. And we even turned on responsive resizing for our artboards and had a few mess ups there, but <laughs> the ability to stretch things uh, and ebb and flow images that are masked. Um, we have avatars and text that stay anchored uh, in the corners that we want them to. So we did some responsive resize stuff, responsive widgets. Oh, that was great. That was a fun one. Uh, probably one of my favorite ones that I'm quite partial to. I had a lot of fun creating a retro food style website um, using some really cool illustrations. We learned that you could bring Adobe Illustrator files right into XD. It turns them into SVGs, editable, perfect, beautiful. Um, and we were able to uh woo, let's make sure we click on our actual prototype here we're able to create a real fun kind of like website that had some hovers had really some cool retro effects in here um and we had hovers for our buttons i just turned those all into the on state and i added a little pop of color in mine at the very end because i ended up making some behance 
uh, presentations. And so, um, hey, if you haven't taken your work side note, just real quick FYI, if you haven't taken your work and posted it to Behance to build up your portfolio and start really building that body of work, Behance is a great place to do it. I just created some artboards here and then I uh, exported my uh, images. I brought in some supporting elements like some of those little illustrations and I popped them on there. You could even try a little bit of 3D transform. Um, you could have some fun with that. Right, so presentation is a crucial part of being a designer, learning how to not only do the work, but talk about the work and present the work. That was our retro website challenge. That was a fun one. Then we uh, we played with a little parallax animation. We got crazy with typography. I had a couple comments that, of people saying that some of the typography was cool. Some of it looked a little bit like the new Batman movie that's out, a couple of Riddler um, riddles out there, but that's okay. I like it. I thought it was cool. Just by pressing down on our keypad, we're able to create fun parallax animations, um, stretching and moving typography as we go and moving all the way back up. Just moving things at different speeds gives that parallax animation and you can do them in all sorts of directions. And really all we had to do was group everything together, slide it up in the next artboard and then manipulate how things come in and how things move out. And we're creating kind of like the start and finish of each of those little stories. Uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, we played with uh, some typography. We really talked a lot about vertical typography. How do we pair typography? Side note, all along the way, we have been going to Adobe fonts, pairing fonts, finding fonts, font packs. I shared with you some of my favorites and we use those. You just flip on that switch and they are synced to your Adobe CC account and you can start using them immediately, which I think is great. A lot of other design tools, unfortunately, you can like download fonts you have to shut down the uh, shut down the program, restart it. Sometimes even shut down your machine and restart it for the fonts to activate in that program. Not in Adobe XD. It just syncs right into the cloud, right into your Adobe CC, and you can use it in all of your programs. Yeah, so we played with uh, different ways to use um, vertical typography, when to use it, when not to use it. Um, and you guys did some beautiful layouts. We went off canvas and stretched text. That was really fun. And then yesterday we did an, an actual font finding mobile website where we created some fun accordion interactions uh, where we could uh, open cards, close cards, select other cards and get that nice shuffle card effect and see some of our, of our favorite types of typography. So I thought that was just an absolute blast. Um, and we got a question from Robert Winneberg. He asked Wade, what will, oh, he's asking Wade this, right? What will be the best place to post a complete uh, post a complete, yeah, yeah, masterclass spreadsheet on Discord. Oh, I'm not sure. I, I think Wade answered that question for you. That's great. Um, if you have any questions, make sure pop those in the chat. I'd love to answer any questions. If you got questions about design, typography, freelancing, creative career, fair game, open season. And with that being said, why don't we take a look at some of your work, not just the projects themselves, but some of your amazing submissions. This one is coming from Abernail. Abernail, just so you know, is probably one of the youngest designers we know, constantly joining us on the Adobe XD Creative Challenges. Um, and uh, he has made, he's submitted his emoji maker. And it's a really nice case study also here on Behance. You can see the work that goes into it. Always show the work, always show how you went into it, what you were thinking. I like the mixed amount of media, so include some videos. Oh, he even did some cool drop downs. Hello, now we're talking, that's fun some cool different interactions there. So include as much different types of media as you can, right? Create um, a video file, GIFs, um, text blocks, images, uh, drop in your XD prototype right into Behance. That's an impressive thing, but that's beautiful. I'm gonna give some appreciation, show a little love right there inside of Behance. All right, this next one is by Ilham Anugra. And this was, looks like the cryptocurrency swiping application, right? Um, Really a lot of fun, a, a huge trend in 2022 um, is kind of creating these glow effects with gradients. They're beautiful, they're soft, they're subtle, and they don't necessarily have to play in to your overarching color palette or, or theme that you have going on. They can just be fun. I'd say be careful how you use them so that you don't distract from uh, highly readable areas, but these are really beautiful. Let's scroll down a little bit, let's zoom in on some of these beautiful pieces of work here. I also really like the presentation. I like that the navigation bar down here 
It's crisp. It's clean. You have some of that fun, that gradiated fun here, but you can really see uh, uh, where the, the bottom anchored navigation, that tab bar navigation really pops. Maybe a little bit more space in between these just so they're a little bit more legible, but I love the drop shadow, that glow, that lightsaber glow coming off um, coming off of those, uh, those charts, is, charts is really, really beautiful. Let's keep going. The colors typographies that have been chosen. Ooh, we even get an interactive prototype. It's like one of my favorite things. Let's check it out. Get to drag and see a little bit of that animation going on, right? And we even have a little bit of horizontal scroll here, or excuse me, vertical scroll using scroll groups in XD. Right, beautiful. We'll drag that off. And does it go all the way away? We don't know. Hmm, it doesn't. So maybe, maybe work on that interaction just a little bit, but I do like that feeling. That's a good feeling. And that one, uh, is a great submission. Let's leave a little appreciation there. Hey, as much as you can, appreciate other designers' work. Encourage them. Give them some love. Give them some feedback. It's always a good thing. Um, yeah, I love swiping crypto. It's such a cool concept. Well, thank you. I, you know, I, I like that every once in a while. <laughs> Come up with a fun concept for you guys. Uh, loading animations. Remember our bank loading animation? Well, we have one from Ana Avila, um, and this is loading animation in Adobe XD, a place where they could find mentors, have portfolio review, find job in Adobe XD. I like it. I want to see this loading animation. Is that a, that's a lottie? And then we have the swapping of text on there. Okay, all right, I see you. That's nice. Um, nice scroll down. Okay. Are these things loading in. Oh, we got a little hover effect there. That was kind of interesting. Oh, that's just like, that's just constantly playing. That's a looping little like looping animation that's happening there. I like it. It's super smooth. I like, I like the framing and the devices and the case study is very nice. The color palette on this one, especially kind of grabs you. Let's jump in and see. Can we get a little closer here? Yeah, the color palette on this one and the really refined, simplistic animations are nice. I'm not really sure what's happening with these dots here. Maybe that's part of the loading animation. Um, or maybe that's part of the fictitious brand, the concept brand that you're building. But I do really enjoy the whole thing. It's quite lovely. Um, yeah, okay. Let's do this one. This one really caught my eye in the Discord server. This one is by Ilham Anugra again. Um, and this is, uh, let's see, let's see a, a little bit more of the loading animations. I haven't even looked at it yet. I'm going to be just as surprised as you are. Uh, but I saw like the colorful pop and the, the, the models kind of placed into shapes. And I thought that could be an interesting one to see some some loading animation. So we're showing kind of step by step, I see. So have some movement in the typography. We're like Artboard 2 is like popping these out. Nice. In comes our model and then some of the little ancillary elements that will kind of pop in. And we've got a beautiful color palette. Love this case study format. If you're looking for a good, simple, easy, approachable case study format, this might be a good one. Let's check out the, the interface. I'm not pressing anything. It's just happening, right? Boom, boom. Loading animation. Nice. I love it. It's really good. The only thing I might encourage you to do. Oh, and then it moves into timed animations. Very smooth. Very smooth. Hey, the only thing I would recommend is be careful with your animations. Not everything has to fly in from the side or off the side. Sometimes we can do things right on canvas or on that particular visible space inside of the browser or viewport. So play with that a little bit. And then also when we're doing animations like this, like rotating animations, I'm always a big fan of less is more. I think you are really having fun experimenting and learning some cool techniques here. But when you really start to mature, not only design, but animation, it starts to become a little bit more subtle, a little less in your face and a less Will Smith in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and a little bit more I am legend, simple tear dropping down the eye. It's still very, very beautiful. All right. So I do love this one. The colors are great as well. Let's give some love. Let's show some love there over on Behance. Little golf clap, little appreciation there for everybody who is submitting beautiful pieces of work. All right. Again, if you have any questions, ask those in the chat. Love to answer anything you have. There's another one from Aberdeen. I'll do this on purpose. I just scan through Discord. We'll have to go back through before this is over. And uh, yeah, we'll scan back through and see what else we can find. Here's some more collapsible sidebars. I like this. I like the side-by-side -side difference, right? Um, this looks like maybe it could be like a streaming platform. We have all these horizontal rows, which are really, really nice. I'm hoping I can see a little bit of that. Oh, that's nice. See, when you anchor everything over to the side, everything's pushing in and out and staying kind of anchored to that left-hand bar. Let's look at that one more time. It's a nice vibe. It's a nice feeling. You don't have to fade anything. It can just whoop, cover up text. No problem. That works great. I love it. The colors are nice. Animation is smooth and slick. One thing I would say is when you're thinking about 
animations. Animations are different from micro interactions, right? So sometimes you have these little slick, quick interactions like hovers or presses or sidebars collapsing. Those are the types of interactions that your user probably wants to be fairly quick. They don't need to experience the animation. They need to actually get through the interaction and be like, great, we're on to the next thing. So understanding the, the difference between those two things. So for instance, like a sidebar collapsing or a tapping a button, I want to see a micro interaction. She'd be pretty snappy. Whereas a loading animation, you can draw out a little bit. We're kind of, maybe we're loading the page. Maybe we are kind of priming the user for an experience. All that's fine. But as soon as you start getting into those little micros, make them snappy, make them quick. That's my thing. Um, some really beautiful <laughs> Wade Acuff said, wait, so don't get jiggy with it. Not all the time. I'm, there's a time for getting jiggy with it, right? And there's a time for just the two of us. A little serious moment as I just sang on the stream and I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again, I promise. Okay, let's move on and act like I didn't sing. This is from Ilham Anugra again. I swear I'm not trying to pick the same people, but I do want to point out something that's very interesting. Creating case studies doesn't need to be a custom thing every time. I've now seen a couple of projects from Ilham and they are the same layout right an icon with a highlight so this person this designer has a format of case study and after they're done creating work they just smack it into that format and then maybe change some colors right maybe change some core colors and things um just to bring the whole thing into a branded experience somebody laughed everyone's laughing at my singing laugh with me not at me that'd be much appreciated <laughs> this is a friday stream let's keep going um all right adobe please have me back sometime I yeah, please. Um, okay, this is our dashboard. I really actually, I mean, I know we're talking about collapsing um, uh, like sidebars. But this is actually a very nice dashboard experience. Very nice sidebar design with collapsible areas. You got this kind of GitHub kind of threaded chain on the inside for like internal menu items. Really clean, really, really nice. Kiss my creative. Uh, we do not need more singing. Don't you encourage me. I'm sure the entire Adobe team is on the other side going, yeah, don't, don't encourage him because he will. Um, you, I love seeing this. Wow, this is great. Seeing the different components that start to build a little bit of a design system, a little bit of a pattern library, right? These are the elements, the guts that go into this piece of work here is having components that have multiple states on, off, collapsed, not, right? Extended or compressed and, and having all of those different states. Now, all you have to do is load them into the proper areas and boom, 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 boom. They start, you start a pattern of building blocks. Think of them like Legos, right? Once you've established what you can do with Legos, well, I don't need to go out and create new blocks. I have my blocks and I'm just gonna stack them in place. It really speeds up the design process and XD is great at doing that. So if you haven't dug into your assets panel, created a shared library inside of XD that you can then use in all of the other applications, including uh, the new uh, uh, Adobe Creative Express, which is amazing. It's like just crushing it for fast, fun, cool, and fully fledged and form designs. But you can use these libraries in everything that you do, which is phenomenal, right? Okay, so um, color palette, nice typography choices, a little bit of that interactive prototype. Let's check it out. Okay, um, let's press R. Yes, see, see, okay, so quick, fast, interactions. And I think, I think this designer actually, not only were they doing collapsible sidebar, they're going, let's pull some of those responsive widgets in place. Cause look at them ebb and look at them flow. See how these are responsively anchored responsibly and responsively, right? <laughs> responsively anchored to the left-hand side. And these stay put, they're anchored to the right. Watch that interaction there. Boom. They move out, right? And then they whoop move back in really well done one thing i would say is when you're creating dashboards this wasn't really the the challenge it wasn't part of the challenge but watch out for spacing make sure you have some consistent spacing between columns and rows make your gutters feel really intentional that gives just a nice vertical rhythm and it's a nice kind of like a nice a nice uh, experience on the eye so to speak all right but this is a really really nice project if i see one more from abernail or or from uh uh Ilum, um we're gonna have to skip it this one from somebody else. All right, submissions. This is from Yuya Yang. Um, and this is the responsive widgets challenge. Really nice. I like you did a little bit of that fogged glass effect. 
um, and kind of popped them off for presentation. Love it. You know, what's cool about doing a responsive widgets challenge is you can create all these responsive widgets and then you do whatever the heck you want with them, right? You create a case study, you'll make them whiz and fly all around. You pop them out with some dimensionality and the whole thing kind of just comes together. It looks really, really nice. I like this. This is really, really fun. Um, I like the actually really, really like the, uh, like kind of crisp that thin border. If you're going to do this glass effect, like this creative is doing, you know, um, really thin border around the outside, take the opacity of it down, make it a little bit transparent and then put that object blur, that background blur on, excuse me, boom, you have glass work a little bit of a gradient for the color. Don't just do one color, but do white to white gradient going from like 40 to, I don't know, 15 or something. And you'll get a little bit more of that glass kind of like a reflection vibe. And that's how you build those glass kind of components. These are really, really nice. I love it. I love it. Let's give a little bit of feedback, a little bit of, little bit of thumbs up there. I love this one. All right. It's another one from Yu Yu Yang. We actually got to see this one the other day, but briefly, at the, <laughs> briefly at the end of the stream, Kiss My Creative says, responsibly responsive. I like that. I feel like, Oh no, I'm going to have to release a sticker pack with one that says responsibly, responsively, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, this is good. Ooh, I like bringing a little bit of that retro vibe in. Did a little bit of that, uh, like, uh, halftone, like, kind of pattern in the background. A little bit of that comic kind of pop style. Kind of, uh, kind of modern art style. I like it. I like the three-dimensionality on these little cards. Makes them, <laughs> I, it may not be, like, a, a maybe a bad thing. It look a little bit like cigarette-like packs to me. Oh, don't smoke, kids. Um, and, uh, but they have a really cool, I like that little cool effect. Really fun. Never thought about doing that i also like how this creative took my idea of these little kind of like cuts and again drop some dimensionality on them right made them kind of pop out a little bit super fun love it love it appreciate it all right uh this one is by itor bachensky this is also the retro food submission uh vintage website inspired by dinner menus of the past let's look we got a little we got a little cassette tape loading animation i like that Ooh. Ooh, can we go back? Oh, I think we did see this one the other day, just briefly. It's animating the lines as they move around. It's a very like After Effects kind of like uh, vibe and transition. But I really, I want to go back to this section right here. Hold on. Right where there's a mixture of transition types, of, of easing types. Like the first one has a little bit of that. And for the lack of a better word, boyoing, that springing effect, that bounce effect where the star comes in and the lines kind of bounce there. And then the rest of them aren't quite as bouncy. Check it out one more time, right? We have a little bit of that spring effect and then everything else is a little bit more like on an ease, right? So a little less springing, I think, but I like it. And there's a little bit of spring again, mixing a lot of the easing, right? Having a lot of fun. I think it's good. I think this is a great exploration of easing types of animation where you can kind of escape that micro interaction stiffness, right? And crispness and get to something a little bit more playful. Be playful, be exploratory, be creative. Don't think just because you're designing a website or an application that you can't push the limits, right? You may not love how the results turn out when you push the limits, but you'll end up pushing the limits of your creativity as well as everybody else's around you. We will all be challenged by your creativity. So just a little word of encouragement for you today. Don't be afraid to push the limit. All right. It's another one from Yuya Yang, a really beautiful color palette, really lovely, like vertical typography. This is very hot right now as far as trends, like masking images into kind of like nice, simple shapes, like combined shapes like this this arch here. Arches are hot right now. They are the hotness. It used to be hexagons. Now it's arches. I like it. Let's see one more. And this is by Chinua Nwasu. And this is really interesting, really cool. I love the use of color. Uh, I love the, the use of kind of overlaying the typography here um, and doing something kind of interesting. We didn't actually talk about on our vertical, ty vertical typography stream, which was not just laying the typography out vertical so you turn your head, but then actually stacking typography can be a really fun one as well. You know, we talk about pop. I'm talking pop of color. This is hitting all the marks as far as color usage goes. Fun little loading animation. Oh, it all kind of springs in. One thing I would have liked to have seen there, and maybe maybe you're creating a style of combined transitions together. One thing I wouldn't mind seeing is separating some of the elements out like you did here with this typography. But I do like how everything is kind of puzzle piecing and moving 
together. I think that's pretty fun. I, I would say that this, this website design probably has some accessibility and usability issues, but it has lots of creativity, lots of inspiration pulled into it, lots of exploration, which I think is absolutely necessary and I absolutely love it. So you got to find that balance, right? Between structure, innovation, right? What's usable, but what's also kind of pushing the limits in the realms of what of, of what you can do. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a cool one. I love it a lot. So again, make sure that you have signed up and you've, you've entered into the Adobe XD creative, or excuse me, Discord server. That way you can post your submissions. It's never too late. We'll always be there, right? You can post submissions from these challenges, previous challenges, future challenges, do them all. I'd love to see you there. And that's our recap for the day. I had a lot of fun looking at your work, checking your challenges and your submissions, singing to you and having you laugh back at me. It's been a good time out there. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your host for these last few weeks of challenges. We are still in the midst of 36 days of typography. So check back for some amazing content here on Adobe Live. Don't go away. There's more coming. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care.